I want to get to Hans's points here in a couple more videos, but Kyle's on with us. So joining us now, Kyle Kalinske, a host of Secular Talk, one of the co-founders of the Just Democrats. Welcome to TYT, brother. How you doing? Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Ah, No problem. All right. Since you're the guy who originally wrote the progressive platform for Just Democrats, the James Madison of the Just Democrats, if you will. Um <laughs> So you tell us, what should be uh, progressive priorities for uh, 2019? So there's good news and there's bad news. Um, I would say that the bad news is all of the issues that pretty much all of us on the left put in our top issues, I think that they're dead on arrival with the Republican Senate and with Donald Trump as president. So, of course, those issues that I'm referring to would be Medicare for all, living wage, free college. So I think that the best time to push for those particular ideas is when we also have a Democratic Senate and we also have a Democratic president. And even if we have a bunch of corporatists that we have to go through, it's okay. We'll bulldoze them and we'll cross that bridge when when we get to it. But that doesn't mean that there are no issues that we actually could win on in 2019. I actually think there are a, a bunch of them. So first of all, we need to weaponize the Republicans ideology against them. And we're going to need really strong leadership on the left. And we're going to need really strong organization on the left. So I actually really hope that Pramila Jayapal and Mark Pocan and Ro Khan are listening right now because they really need to be the ones uh, to lead this agenda, which I'm about to lay out for you. So first of all, Donald Trump said a million times when he was campaigning for president that uh, he wants to get out of Afghanistan. There are about a dozen Donald Trump tweets before he became President Trump, where he says it's a really stupid war. Why are we why are we there wasting all this money? They don't care about us. Our people are dying, yada, yada. So if I'm the Democrats, I get the entire progressive caucus together. I create these giant billboards that have all of his tweets on it. I get a highlight reel. that's five minutes long of him ripping the wars. And then I go on all the Sunday shows and I do just a total onslaught and a giant effort to try to get us out of the war in Afghanistan. And I say, listen, this is a bipartisan thing. Trump said it. Uh, we believe it on the left. And then also we can get, uh, you know, pick off some libertarians like Rand Paul in the Senate. You can get Justin Amash in the House. And I actually think that there's a chance that we can get out of Afghanistan and we could do it with the progressive caucus leading and then uh, some bipartisanship. So that's the first thing I would do. The second thing I would do is a uh, a buy American bill. So this is another thing that Trump spoke about endlessly. He said uh, that he wants to uh, have the U.S. government only buy American goods. If he really wanted to do that, he could have signed an executive order on day one to get that done, but he didn't do it. Instead, he did this nonsense, symbolic buy American week, which again is just pure symbolism and there's no there there. So why not have the Progressive Caucus put pressure on him, propose a bill on that front, and yet again, you could do uh, a full court press on this issue and there's a chance it can get through. And then the two biggest things in my mind are uh, Elizabeth Warren just recently released an awesome anti-corruption bill. And in it, you know, basically she bans the revolving door and she bans the president from owning any foreign businesses. And she creates this this new sheriff of corruption. And uh, I think it's an awesome bill. But here's the problem with it. It's way too wonky and there's no marketing and messaging behind it. It's called like the Anti-Corruption and Public Integrity Act. What I would do is get all the Democrats behind closed doors, and I would say, here's the new name of this bill, the Drain the Swamp Act. And then yet again, you got to do a full court press. You have to be really organized. It has to be driven by Ro Khanna, Pramila Jayapal, Mark Pocan, the Progressive Caucus. And you have to push this idea that, listen, President Trump said he wants to drain the swamp. Here's a bill to do exactly that. We're going to drain the swamp. And I know we can pick off some Republican votes on this as well. So let's have a bipartisan win and let's do it. And then finally, sorry, I know this is going on a while. uh, There's the idea of a trillion dollar infrastructure bill and you call it the Make America Great Again Act. And again, (laughs) you do a full court press. And some of these things you can actually get done because you could pick off some uh, Republican moderates, some libertarian leading Republicans. And because of the framing of it, and if you're really aggressive in your marketing of it, even if you don't win on these fronts, you get giant marketing wins for the 2020 election, where then hopefully we get a Democratic majority, Democratic supermajority, if you will. And then we really get all the stuff that we want implemented. 
God damn it, Kyle. I mean, you're st- <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> I'm uh, a nerd. I, I spent about three days thinking about all that. <laughs> yeah, that's why we have you on. That's why your show's so popular. That's why I would argue probably the most single underrated progressive in the country. Uh, so... Uh, there's there's two things that I, that I love about that. One is the obvious jujitsu, right? So, Trump, you hey, I'm just trying to help a brother out, man. You promised it on the campaign trail. Here, I can show you the video, right? And, and every one of them should be launched with a video of Donald Trump promising it, right? And hey, don't worry, we're here to help you out. And hey, Washington, you love bipartisanship, right? Trump, I'm giving you what you want. Washington, I'm giving you what you want. You want bipartisanship? Let's get the hell out of Afghanistan. Let's go pack them up, pack them up, pack them up, right? And all the other things that you mentioned, I'll add a little bit on top. And of it's that. appealing to yeah, Trump's yeah, narcissism. Like yeah. that's the that's another yeah. I think deeply gotta important element of that. Yeah. You gotta use that against him. That's yeah. exactly the plan. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, the the buy American thing, the the part I wanted to add to that is that something Democrats of course never do because they also have the corporate donors, is hey, if you don't have your headquarters in America, or you have an offshore uh, tax loophole, well, congratulations, you're not American anymore. You will not get any government contracts from the United States of America. Uh, we can call it the Cayman Islands rule, okay? But it's not, <laughs> of course, it's not just the Cayman Islands, but that's a well-known tax shelter, right? So you wanna do business there? Great, have at it. I'm sure that the Cayman Islands has wonderful government contracts you can get from them. Uh, but uh, we're not open for business for people who are, not, who are not willing to pay taxes in America. But what are you going to do about Ireland, for example? That is not specifically offshore banking, but like just a tax loophole that is more legal, I guess. Yeah, I, I got no interest in Ireland. Uh, America first, okay? So, <laughs> so if you want to use a, the, uh, I think it's what is it? There's a Dutch sandwich and the Irish something, right? The Irish, which also sounds dirty. <laughs> yeah, I know. Every one of them sounds dirty, right? Um, so, yeah, have at it, Hoss. You use one of those tax loopholes. Congratulations. Uh, good luck trying to petition the government of Ireland for government contracts from them. But we're done with you. I think. Um, I think tactically this is really good, uh, even beyond uh, pushing for legislation, because I, I, I don't know if we could actually get anything done, uh, even with bipartisan support. But tactically speaking, this is great momentum for the progressive movement because you immediately alienate a big chunk of corporate Democrats because corporate Democrats are immediately going to be thrown off by the fact that you're calling this Make America Great Again Act. Uh, they're gonna, they're not gonna wanna appeal to, uh, any sort of Republican sensibilities. And, uh, some of those, uh, some of the things that you mentioned go against their, uh, the, the best interests of their corporate benefactors regardless. So, uh, it's a good move, uh, to, to gain, to build a lot of, uh, real, uh, momentum behind, uh, uh, the, the progressive branch of the Democratic Party, especially right before 2020. So, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think on that it, front, it's good too. Democrats, you know, even the ones that mean well and are really good on the issues, they need to take more risks and get better at framing and get better at actually playing the game of politics. Because it's really easy to be good on the issues, but then be really boring and not know how to fight and not know how to get attention. And listen, this is the first time in a long time that the left actually has some teeth. We really do now. I mean, Ro Khanna, and Ocasio Cortez and Pramila Jayapal just uh, got Pelosi to buckle on the three fifths rule that she was considering, uh, which would basically kneecap the entire progressive agenda. You need basically a supermajority to ever raise taxes on the middle class, even if you're going to offset it elsewhere. So, in other words, that was a, a backdoor attempt to try to shut the door on Medicare for all and free college and a living wage. And what happened is the left actually drew a red line and said, uh, no, we're not going to do that. And, uh, you can't make us. So what I want them to do is take that same mentality of like, okay, no, we're in control now. We're in charge now and go further with it. Like you guys can really do this and think about the massive media attention you would get if you proposed a trillion dollar infrastructure bill and called it the Make America Great Again Act. You're trolling the country's top Twitter troll. <laughs> the media is going to is going to fawn all over you. I mean, that's and then there's one more point I wanted to make, which is. Um, and I can't believe I'm saying this. I never said this ever before, but Sean Hannity actually made a decent point the other night. He was talking Whoa. about, he was talking about, um, criminal justice reform. And he said, randomly, I couldn't believe it, but he said, 
you know, uh, the president did a great thing pardoning Alice Johnson, and he did. I think we all agree on that. But I don't understand why don't why don't why doesn't he just take it to the next level and and pardon more nonviolent uh, drug offenders? And I thought, yeah, wait a second. Sean Hannity agrees on this, and he's a, a traditional right wing Republican. Rand Paul agrees on this. He's a libertarian Republican. And then everybody on the left wants to release every single nonviolent drug offender. So what are we waiting for? This is another thing where if the progressive caucus leads and they fight, we can actually win on this. Yeah, so Kyle, there's a lot that I love in what you're saying. So most of the folks that have come on in the previous three hours justifiably, understandably talk about how we have to fight now to build up to wins in 2021 if we have the presidency, the Senate, etc. And that makes sense. Uh, and some have talked about you know, internal Democratic uh, battles, and then some uh, battles that we can win with the Democrats in the House. For example, getting out of Yemen uh, is a possibility. Right. But you're talking about a more comprehensive idea to win right now on a number of really important issues, and you've laid out an excellent path for how to do that. So I, you know, and you, of course, the question is, do the Democrats want to win? Right, right, and yeah. and that's a, that's a significant uh, question. I'm going to get to that in a second. But you answered a question Jimmy Dore had uh, when we first started the program. He was the first guest on and uh, guest host on. And Jimmy asked, "Well, what did the left get from Nancy Pelosi? Because the right wing got a bunch of concessions from them. Uh, but you know, getting rid of that three fifths rule is enormous." And I think Jayapal was absolutely critical in that. We're going to hear from her in a second uh, in this coverage as well. Uh, but that's way more important than any committee assignment or anything along those lines. So, so that's a great win for progressives. Uh, Elizabeth Warren was on earlier and she talked about uh, their great anti-corruption bill that you mentioned. But to your point about simplicity, the point I've been making to a lot of progressives in Congress and outside is, how's this for simplicity? And all private financing of elections, period. Right. No, yeah. It's not complicated. It's not nuanced. It's not this. It's not that. Private financing leads to working for private interests. And in fact, the argument I use is now we'll call it Kyle esque, right? <laughs> Which is jujitsu. So what's the, uh, the thing that, that Republicans consider the biggest boogeyman? George Soros. I got great news for you guys. We're going to take George Soros money out of politics. Exactly. And we're going to end all private financing of elections. That way Soros can't give any money. Now, neither can the Koch brothers or any of the corporations or any of the unions, right? Do we have a deal? You guys said you want to take Soros money out of politics. We're going to try to help you. And the way you do that is an amendment, an amendment. Medicare for all is possible. Green New Deal is possible. An amendment is possible. There's no reason why we should do half measures on the most important issue there is. Yeah, and Wait, do um, am do I am I mistaken about the money element though? When you talk about it, and I, I'm on board with everything you're saying, but my question would be, uh, what happens uh, when when we regard money as speech? Still, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Well, that's why the amendment is so important, and that's yeah. why everything we do before we get the amendment is really just tweaks around the edges. Um, but to to add one more point to that, I think that. On top of simplifying Elizabeth Warren's bill and changing it to the Drain the Swamp Act, I think that we should also take Richard Ojeda's idea from him and, and give him full credit for it, of course. But the idea of putting body cameras on lobbyists, <laughs> mandating that oh, we put damn. body cameras on lobbyists. Because, listen, see that reaction that you guys all just My had right boy, now? Dude. That's how I the love media Ojeda. is going to react. <laughs> The media is going to react like that. And then all of a sudden, it's all about creating more energy and more interest in all of these issues. So that's why you have to troll the other side. That's why you have to do jujitsu. That's why you have to be really aggressive in your framing. And that's why you need to have strong organization behind the scenes in the Progressive Caucus. We need Pramila Jayapal. We need Ro Khanna. We need all these people to step up and be de facto leaders, if not actual leaders in the Democratic Party. Because I'll tell you what, the corporate Democrats – are going to be running interference for the Republicans the whole time. So sometimes we are going to be fighting a two front war. But when that happens, fine, we're going to beat you in that war because they have something that the corporate Democrats don't have. Ro Khanna, Pramila Jai, Paul, Mark Pocan, all the Justice Democrats, they have a bully pulpit that Nancy Pelosi does not have. You know what their bully pulpit is? Us. TYT, secular talk. 
Jimmy Dore, all the progressive shows. And it's time that they start using it. And it's time that we we create this energy and we ride it to electoral victories, but then also policy victories. Well, in a sense, uh, that began tonight because almost all the people you mentioned were on tonight talking yes. about the progressive agenda for 2019. Mm-hmm. Uh, our fans uh, just as if Ocasio Cortez wasn't you know friendly enough, uh, they bought her Young Turks membership. So now her and her entire staff are, are probably listening to this, mm-hmm. uh, or <laughs> certainly some of them are. So maybe the Kyle's idea, boom, goes straight right into that. Uh, into that, uh, into Congress now. It's a, a opportunity we didn't have before. And, and the, you mentioned Ojeda. He was literally the first guest on tonight. <laughs> okay. Damn, you had Ojeda on? Yeah. I wasn't here. Uh, <laughs> you know what? One, one of the things that I really, intellectual thugs, I'm always talking to you about it. I said yeah. that, that is one thing that, uh, as a person of color who is, that we're always being told to be civil, to forgive the people who treat us poorly, that they yeah. celebrate yeah. the black people at the church who forgave the murder. All of that stuff has to go out of the window. You have to mm. meet these people, you know, where they are. And the reality of it is, is that people get mad when, when Democrats start talking like that. But Republicans have been doing violent talk for centuries, you know? So just like I added to Kyle's great idea, I love what you're saying. It actually, that actually drives me crazy. And I know uh-huh. that I'm not a, that makes me not as good a person, right? No. But when, when, uh, they had immediately after the massacre in Charleston in the church, they start uh, talking about how all those African American families start, start talking about forgiving the shooter. Why oh. are we immediately having that conversation? So when there is a, a, a bombing done by a Muslim, yep. nobody's talking about forgiving the Muslim guy mm-hmm. uh, immediately the next day. Nobody, mm-hmm. nobody. It's the culture that is actually forced down our throat yeah. uh, and saying, "Hey, when, whenever we do terrible things to you, which is quite often." You must immediately forgive us. No, new plan. Okay, we act aggressively against you, and then you you think about forgiving us. That's right. Okay, <laughs> see how you like them apples. And that's why I love that little the little black boy who was in New York that the the woman accused him of groping her, touching her butt, oh, yeah. and the video camera yeah. was there. And they asked the little boy, did he forgive her? And he said no. And I was so proud of him because he wasn't ready to forgive her. And maybe he will later when he's over it. But a moment, please. You know, a moment. Yeah. It's, it's, it gets old. And, and, and do they ask uh, immediately, like, for example, the family of, of the poor woman who was shot by the undocumented worker that they made such a big deal out of. Mm-hmm. He and, and the jury said he didn't shoot her on purpose. He, uh, the gun dropped. And it fired. He should never picked up the gun in the first place, et cetera. But, and, and th- th- those were wonderful folks, the family. And they did, in a sense, I, I saw some of the family members forgave the guy, right? Mm-hmm. But that's not the first question that they asked. That's not how they framed it. The Republicans immediately came out, see the evil immigrants. There was no talk of forgiving. There was only talk of justice and revenge and vengeance, et cetera. Yeah. So no, enough of the disproportionate the treatment of us versus them. So we're not going to take that anymore. So Kyle, before we let you go, I wanted to come back to one other thing that also relates to folks that were on earlier. So Ro Khanna was on and I asked them, so what happens if uh, Pelosi and the Democratic leadership don't introduce the legislation we want? So uh, one example is, I mean, the Yemen bills a layup, Senate already passed it, 206 to 203 in the House. Uh, and now there'll be a lot more Democrats in the House. We pass it, we get out of Yemen. What if Nancy Pelosi says, no, not introducing it for a vote? Uh, which by the way is enormously possible. Um, and, and even more possible, $15 minimum wage is a layup. But what if Nancy Pelosi says, no, we, we're not, I'm not a, allowing a vote? And his answer was, then we fight. So, uh, when do you think that fight starts? Uh, immediately, within a month, within six months? Yesterday. <laughs> so, I, uh, today on my show, I actually put up not just the names of the five Democrats that voted to continue the genocide in Yemen. And I use that word on purpose. It is a genocide. Um, I put up not just their names on my show. I put their phone numbers up and I said, call them. Tell them what you think about this. And I'm going to be doing that a hell of a lot more because it's time that politicians started listening to the people. That's not a debatable issue. It's not, 
it's not a debatable one. Like, <laughs> oh, should we starve babies in Yemen for the profits of Raytheon or no? So now what? it's time to start drawing some lines. And 80% of the American people want to see a living wage. So we should get a living wage. 70% want Medicare for all. So we should get Medicare for all. And if they don't do it, then we're going to make them do it. But Kyle, those, those, those moderate Democrats, those centrists, when they go back home to their town halls, everyone's always like, wait, wait, hold on. You're definitely going to keep bombing Yemen, right? It's a big policy <laughs> position that everyone is talking about nonstop. I mean, yeah. just that's like the Joe, the Joe Manchin thing. Whenever he would, he voted to deregulate Wall Street as if these, you know, poor folks in West Virginia are like, ah, when can Goldman Sachs get another break? <laughs> yeah. And by the way, Joe Manchin, uh, now the head of the Energy Committee because of Chuck Schumer. Uh, so oh. he, uh, he, they punish progressives and reward uh, conservative Democrats. But those days are coming to an end. And so, Kyle, they will say that what you did in putting up their phone numbers, it's their office phone numbers, by the way, right, uh, is, is uncivil. No, that's representative democracy. Mm -hmm. But meanwhile, already... 85,000 children have starved to death in Yemen because of the brutal Saudi blockade of the ports. Okay, 85,000 uh, and 5 million more. There's 14 million people in risk of imminent starvation in Yemen and 5 million kids. I mean, imagine if a million kids die in Yemen. But you were uncivil because you asked people to call their representatives. Mm -hmm. So that's Washington values. And we completely reject that. And they can ask us for forgiveness later, but we're going to win first. Here, here. All right. Kyle Kalinsky, thank you for joining us. Everybody check out Secular Talk. He does that every day. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Kyle, guys. when are you coming on my Twitch show, dude? What's up? You Let's keep... do it, man. Let's do it. Let's do All it right. this week. All right. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Kyle. All right, guys. Bye.